This year, I had the opportunity to be involved and coordinate multiple virtual exchanges. In the past, I've been very involved in study abroad and, and bringing my students around the world, which I'll discuss in a few minutes. But the challenges that we've had recently, uh, I've had the opportunity to introduce my students, students around the world uh, via Zoom and similar tools. So I'm a technical instructor, that's why it's at this conference, I teach web and software development, uh, that's programming, uh, mobile development, I'm a back-end web development, uh, stuff like that. I've been a college instructor for over 12 years. I am the advisor for our IT club. Uh, we'll also coordinate our, all our service learning and the global education for the IT department. Uh, for that, I spent 15 years as software developer and organizational development management. Um, in my slide, I have a picture of myself there in Paris. In my old job before I was an instructor, I um, was about to have the opportunity to start working abroad and then the crash happened. I actually was, was quite abroad, but was about to order tickets to teach in Hawaii uh, for a conference and they canceled it. And I did it via Zoom, uh, Skype or WebEx at the time. And the comments were, we wish you were in person, which so did I. When I uh, became a college instructor, the um, dean who offered me the job did mention that some teachers do get involved in global uh, studies and that sounded like a dream. Two years later, I find myself uh, taking students to Paris and Ireland and Germany. It's been pretty amazing. Some of my neatest experiences as a professor has been the study abroad trips and being the uh, advisor for the uh, club. <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about the three different exchanges that I did this year virtually. Lessons learned and what's next. So the program I inherited, probably a 23 year old program now, uh, was called, it's called the Tri-National Seminar. And that is a consortium of three, of colleges from three different countries. In Wisconsin, there's two schools, uh, my school, which is WCTC and Madison College. In Ireland, there's a school called Southwest College. In Germany, it's Katie Kollwitz. These schools are fairly similar. My, my students are IT students. In Ireland, it's hospitality and marketing. In Madison, it's marketing. In Germany, it's hospitality. The idea of this trip is to connect the students um, somewhat socially, actually, so that they would get to know people from the other side of the world. And then they do a business project together, um, usually around a theme. So like our last theme was making a living by doing good. So our students um, were on teams with Irish, German, and American students, and they would go visit a local employer, and they'd interview them, and they'd do a presentation on whether or not that organization was making a living by doing good. The uh, work between the interview and the presentation is quite fascinating. Uh, German students are very detailed. American students are very creative. Irish students want to be done with it. Um, there's, those are stereotypes, but they're pretty consistent. Uh, it's uh, quite interesting to watch. And at the end, when those students do their presentations, all three countries together on teams, it's pretty amazing because a day before, we're like, we're not sure they're going to get here. So it's been a very successful program, well over 20 years. And when um, we were told there'd be no travel last year, uh, actually two years ago, we had to cancel. Uh, that was pretty heartbreaking. Uh, and for my school, that cancellation goes even farther than stated here. Uh, what's stated on the slide, we will not be able to do global travel until fall of 2022. So it's a about a two and a half year uh, hiatus. And it's quite a challenge when you have a program that you built, uh, you'd like to sustain, 
it isn't just my school. Um, the EU schools are not ahead of us. Uh, they're probably behind us on this list. They, they might have the same timeline. So we had this challenge. We wanted to keep going. We had students who had traveled and met each other a couple of years ago, wanted to keep their relationship going. Uh, we had a program we wanted to sustain. So we made it virtual. It was a year long seminar. We met monthly. Uh, we were able to add another school, which is in Quatar. And um, it was really, really, really neat. Each uh, of the schools took turns designing and hosting meetings. We used Zoom and we used Blackboard and I think a little Padlet. But it was uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite a cool thing. The time that the students were able to discuss together uh, was pretty cherished. The topic was um, happiness, and we also largely leaned on the um, UN priorities for uh, sustainability. So we had different discussions on those topics. We really compared notes on how different countries were reacting to COVID and what their rules were, what their lifestyle was under these circumstances. And um, <clears throat> we pretty much accomplished all our goals and exceeded our expectations on, on that project. I was also able to uh, participate in a third party coordinated uh, virtual exchange. Uh, what that means is there was another organization that my school hired. The money that they would have used to send us abroad was used other ways. And one of them was to bring in the virtual exchanges. So this is the Gazelle Click program, which is great. We went through four to six weeks of training. Uh, we trained with the uh, instructors from around the world. And at the end of the training, we had, uh, like they called it speed dating, where we would meet and discuss and compare notes with what we're thinking we might do with, with, a, with an exchange um, with teachers from around the world. So this is based on a project. So the, the way CLICK works is students from both schools, mine and Nippy in Mexico, would do a project together. Um, so what I have on the slide is a picture of Padlet. One of the things we did is every week for six weeks, we had a question that everybody had to uh, post an answer to and um, respond to. And the the way Padlet works, where you can see everything visually, it really does work better than um, the discussion boards on Blackboard or Canvas. Very interactive, very fun. Now, when we had it running, there were pictures of all the students, but um, the students in Mexico were 17. And so we, by their rules and laws, we could, could not share their images. So they were removed before I was able to take that screenshot. Other things we use, we use Zoom, we use Google Classroom, we use Padlet, and we use Mentimeter, which was really cool. It's like a PowerPoint that the students log into, and then whenever there's like an interactive activity, like a poll, they can do it together, and it's really well integrated. It was a very neat tool. The project's name was Redesigning Cultural Awareness, and the idea is the class that I worked with was a, it's the class that students need to take to be able to study abroad. So these were juniors in high school and they want to study abroad their senior year. And the teacher wanted to break down stereotypes. So by working with Americans um, from the US with, with her students, we would, they would explore the countries they would visit. My students being technical, made a website about that country and visiting that country. So in the past, her students in Mexico would have done research and then they would have um, made a PowerPoint. Instead of a PowerPoint, we made a website, which included an interactive tool using JavaScript to kind of raise the technical requirements for my students. This was an introductory to web development course. It had minimal JavaScript 
Uh, it was mostly an HTML and CSS cut course. So this was a really good match. The third program I was able to start this year, and this was entirely on my own, was Bangladesh Delta Connect. That's what I called it. It's with folks from Bangladesh. On the slide, I have a picture of their computer training center. So it's, it's very common in Bangladesh that unless one went to the very top schools, you could finish college with marketing or accounting with very few computer skills. So there are organizations, NGOs, non-government organizations, starting training schools, both in English and in computer skills to fill in gaps. So new graduates from business school go to these training centers to learn Windows, Word, and Excel. That need is lessening the schools, the universities, the colleges and universities are doing a better job training those. The English schools are very, um, still the third party English skills, very, very busy, but the computer training skills, while they're busy, um, they look to the future and they're like, they need more to be teaching more advanced skills. Students are starting to come out of colleges knowing some of what they're teaching. So they needed their trainers to learn media, Photoshop, image editing, uh, Adobe Premiere, video editing. An interesting thing is that not many people in Bangladesh have computers or laptops. And they're not even that common in the schools, but they have Android phones, which is a fine um, camera and a fine video camera. And so, when they get a job, they're using a PC that they've not had that much access to. But they have a lot of access to a great camera and a great video camera. So small businesses in Bangladesh want their marketing and their accounting people to also be able to um, make flyers, make posters, even make websites, make videos. So that is what my students have been training their trainers on. But the finite number of trainers, it's like five. And uh, we meet every Monday and Wednesday morning, 7 to 8 a.m., which is their 7 to 8 a.m. p.m. <clears throat> and my students train them on those skills. It is a fabulous experience for my students because they can discuss how they spent a year working with uh, folks from Bangladesh, how they were teaching. Um, with one of the people that we are teaching, so the way we did it, is we went through all the material with the leader of the organization, of, of the training center. And he knows English very well. He did very well in the training. And then about a month or two after he would cover a topic, we would do it with everybody else, but he would have to translate. So he's already seen the topic once, he did the homework, and now he's translating. So my students also got the opportunity to teach with a translator. So basically you say a sentence and you pause, it's translated. And this was very interactive. They're um, using Zoom to demonstrate Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, how to use it. it. It went very, very, very well. I saw pictures of some of the folks uh, from Bangladesh. Um, we were doing photo editing the photos that they produced were full of color and life, uh, which was really nice because a lot of this was done during our winter during COVID, which because we were basically in our basements and things were pretty drab. Winters in Wisconsin, spent a lot of time below freezing and sometimes below zero. Uh, winters in Bangladesh, um, they go under 90 degrees a little bit. Uh, it's quite a different situation over there. We did have some unexpected adventures, which really exposed my students to uh, the broader real world. The folks that we were working with also worked for a non-government organization, which means they had to spend some time at the refugee camps working. And so there's a there's refugee camps between Bangladesh and Nymir, 
because Nymeria has had the Rohingya refugee crisis, over a million and a half people in a couple square miles are in these camps on the border. So we are teaching and doing great on Photoshop. And I said, oh, by the way, next week, we'll have spotty internet because we'll be next to the refugee camps. And then we tried to log on and they have no internet. So that week gets missed. They also had some COVID closures where they're like, uh, we can't get out of the building and we've been, so only one of us could log in. So we had to skip a week. And they had political power outages where during political protests, the government turned off all the power. And so we weren't able to teach those weeks. Things that our, my students would never have thought of and never realized uh, others I'm, uh, put up with. Some of the lessons I learned uh, per program, if I look at the different approaches, the Tri-National Seminar was an established program. So here's something we were already doing. We already worked well with the instructors from around the world on that um, seminar. And so the primary pro is the network already existed. And my school actually expected us to do something with the Trinational Seminar. So we really needed to be able to say, well, yeah, we met. We um, uh, worked together on this. A con, well, the more schools you add, the more time zones gets to be pretty rough. And whichever schools make the compromise on time zone have poor attendance. And it's just the way it is. And that, that, that was, that was uh, pretty tricky, you know, with four different groups. Uh, Germany, Ireland, Kratar, they were pretty close, uh, Kratar, but, um, you know, we were, we were quite different than them. And uh, other things like in the U.S., we didn't necessarily need to skip for every single uh, labeled holiday while... Uh, in Germany, if there's any words on that calendar, they'd have to skip. It was, uh, you have to work around a lot with them, stuff like that. And that's just really the, the pain of having four schools and four, well, five schools and four countries. But the third party, they do the coordination. They're the ones who make it work. Uh, they provide training and they find you the partners. And the finding of the partners is the primary um, strength of them, even though the coordination and the training is very useful also. Uh, kind of a weakness, it tied to projects and courses. That's got strengths and weaknesses. Weakness for us is our courses are eight weeks, which means it's a very short timeline to get a global project done. It has to work with both schools. We were not able to get our students to do a lot outside of class with each other, which we didn't really understand. And that's not gazelle's weakness that's kind of ours but it was a challenge that we faced that we did not expect and it's not free i don't know what it cost um it's definitely a fraction of flying and i do not believe that virtual exchanges should replace a school study abroad i believe that these virtual exchanges should supplement them so if your department can send 10 kids to students to ireland Maybe we can get another 20 or 30 exposed to people around the world through a virtual exchange. <clears throat> and for lessons learned on the Bangladesh Delta Connect. I had complete freedom. We were building it as we went. I believe that the uh, potential there is significant and it was entirely free. Cons, well, one is because I was in a third world country, I had to deal with a lot of different situations. Their internet was good when they had it. And not everybody, most people won't be able to find a partner on their own. Um, maybe their school has some, maybe they're, you know, I was involved in some volunteering in other ways that connected me, but uh, that's gonna be hard to find. It's easiest to find a partner through a third party. Another strength, when I say complete freedom of the Bangladesh is it wasn't tied to a semester. So we're still working on it. It's um, June, we're still meeting. Uh, we will finish when they're done and different students will pop in and out and that'll be fine. That means I gave more students, provided more students the opportunity. 
all of them had unique and challenging privacy concerns. The trinational, we had to work with the EU rules on images um, and how we did that. Quetar, those students, Qatar, those students were minors. Um, so they had specific rules around that and who we could connect them with and a little bit. Um, in Mexico, they have very strict rules about images of minors and uh, the ages of who else was on the other line. It was uh, interesting. I was surprised the U.S. has a lot less rules than they did. And then uh, privacy concerns for Bangladesh were the most uh, but due to political unpredictability. It's a fairly stable country right now, but you never know the future. Students wanted all communication and work to be secure. So we used Moodle with sign-ins to compare our work. We used email. Um, that was not Gmail. You know, I used my school email uh, to communicate. Um, Moodle was the main one there. Uh, we don't label pictures with uh, names. And um, we did as much there as possible to just give them a, a comfort level that if things ever shifted there. Another uh, challenge uh, with Bangladesh is we had to be concerned about gender. You're not, we would not put, we did have, um, uh, uh, most of my students were female who were doing the teaching. That was okay because there are multiple students, but we do, if we ever do one-on-one, -on -one, they said they really need to be able to say that it's um, the same gender. It's like, there's, uh, we don't care, but others would, stuff like that. My recommendation um, is to try it. If you have any opportunity to use an organization like Gazelle, um, if you have any opportunity to um, uh, work with an organization and do a virtual exchange, I recommend trying it. Um, even the things that weren't perfect were still a benefit to the students, uh, especially after the year we've had where students have been fairly isolated, well, quite isolated, to actually get them connected with folks from the other side of the world in an academic setting uh, is fabulous. Uh, there wasn't a downside to it. What's next? Well, I want to expand the Bangladesh Delta Connect um, and keep moving that forward and get more of my students involved. The Trinational Seminar will be repeated. We're going to do it virtually next year. A click, I'm expected to do it again in the spring. Uh, probably a different partner, but uh, it might be the same school, different teacher, because that teacher is going to be in a different role. And then we're starting something new. We're calling Chateau Connect. Chateau is Bengali for students. And what we want to do is connect our students with their students, so not their trainers. So far, we've been training the trainers. We want to connect them to our students, to their students. And for my students, it would be a global experience. For their students, it would be practicing English and a little bit of a global experience. Uh, the, the format will likely be like four meetings. So if you volunteer as one of my students to do Shatur or Connect, you will come back and tell me that you've met all four times and you had the conversations that were prescribed. And then you would um, kind of give me a little feedback on it. That's the program that we are going to be building this year. We hope to get 10 students involved in it. Um, if that works, we can expand it quite a bit. And that can end up being a really significant program that will be free. And uh, the, my friends in Bangladesh, there's a picture of them right there. I have three of them. They're very excited about this Amara Shatur Connect. Once again, I highly recommend that you try a virtual exchange, especially during this time when other exchanges and global travel um, are either challenging or impossible.